Hey y'all, this is Notzer, and today we're taking a look at a new ship. It came out in 9.9. .9. It's Paolo Emilio. It's currently available in the Research Bureau section for 43,000 Research Bureau points. Now, this is the first high-tier Italian DD in the game, and I actually tested this ship probably a year ago, but it was completely different. As you can see, my build on the screen is a gun build. I do try and take Expert Marksman and Fast Turret Traverse because... This does have very slow torturers, and by overcoming the slow torturers, I can use my sap more consistently. I can actively maneuver and take advantage of the speed. The base detection is 7.7. .7. With my build, I have concealment expert and obviously concealment module. So 7.1 is definitely usable, but you can't use the torpedoes. The torpedoes have six kilometers on their range. Not that that means that they're completely useless, unlike the Soviets, you know, Kaba, you get your active smoke creep mechanic that makes its way from the Italian cruiser line. The speed boost works very similar to the small end. It's sort of a over-energized, short-duration speed boost that gives you a really big punch of speed. It allows you to obviously disengage, but also rush forward. Uh, you don't have anything else. You have no other options. You cannot choose defensive AA. You can't get hydroacoustic. You can't change the smoke to a traditional smoke. You can't change the torpedoes. What you see is what you get. So with that in mind, how do we get the most out of a ship like Paolo Emilio? Well, Paolo Emilio has terrible AA, fantastic speed, uh, really good maneuverability for that speed. It is a large ship, though. As you notice, it has a lot of health. So it sort of rides that line between a cruiser and a DD on size. It doesn't have a citadel, so it doesn't have the vulnerability of a cruiser, obviously, but it's still larger than average. So it should be easier on than average for enemies to engage you. So you have to keep that in mind. Uh, and in this instance, I was trying to take advantage of a broadside sap. Broadside sap does pretty good damage, legitimately good damage against all types. But whenever I fired my gun, I was like, what? is spotting me what could possibly be the source of that it's got to be whatever's laying this smoke they have to be some way out of it or someone near it has to be there and notice the iowa looks like he's going to flash through this gap i'm looking to try and punish so as i was exploring this i was hearing it's a yolo ship you want to go smoke, speed boost, rush battleships, and use your torpedoes at point blank because your torpedoes are the highest damage in the game, tier for tier. And that's all great, and it does do a fantastic job, but it's a, it's a tip and a technique that is becoming less successful as time goes on, and you have to be more willing to make adjustments to your play in order to get the most out of the ship line. And yep, yeah, they're a nice broadside. Really heavy broadside, guys. Notice where I'm aiming. We're aiming at the top of the hull. I'm looking for the largest amount of armor with the least amount of armor millimeter-wise. So, great big top of the hull broadside, the, the bow and stern broadside, really good candidates for sap shells like this to do full damage or nearly. Obviously, superstructure is a good place too. The worst place that you can fire your sap rounds is at the waterline. Unless you know that the waterline is secure. So I was like, okay, we did a little bit of damage. We were spotted for a little bit. We still haven't had to use any of our cooldowns, which is great. I don't want to have to use both of them constantly in tandem. I want to try and use one or the other or both, depending on the situation. So we were able to get some broadside shots on the enemy. Well, we're doing okay damage. Nothing to write home about. You know, he's not going to die instantly, but it's chip damage. And it's free chip damage until that exact moment. And I was like, oh, what is that? Something's changed. Ah, uh, the Chung Mu. The Chung Mu worked to try and detect me. Great play by him. In response, I'm just going to return fire, get some damage on him, do about 2,000. Not bad. We had a lot of ricochet, and only two shells made contact, but two was enough to make the trade worth it. I mean, they haven't done anything to me. So it, it feels good. You know, right now... Doing a little bit of sap damage passively, it, it works just fine. And in this position, I was like, okay, well, we're doing all right. We haven't taken too much damage. We can afford to be aggressive and probably go after this Holland because he must be right in front of me. You see the torpedoes that flashed across the screen. They're on the left side. If I could rush towards him, 
I potentially can ambush him, very similarly to a Kleber. And unlike the Kleber, I won't be using main battery reload. I will be using the inherent damage increase that SAP provides against targets that are more vulnerable than, you know, others. So in, in my head, I'm thinking of this very French. Use the speed, ambush, move around the map, relocate, make the enemy feel your presence everywhere. That's the ideas that are running through my head. And Paolo Emilio works very well, just as the French do. I'm actually quite excited to get a full line of these guys because this is this is fun. I love a challenge, and these guys are completely different from other DD lines that I've experienced. And it's completely different from the version that I experienced like a year ago, back when that sap broadside could do like 10k damage. I'm not even kidding you, like two shot DDs. This is not that powerful. But it is powerful enough that you should consider it. You don't want to just play this as a full-on YOLO. And oh, hello there, Mr. Chung Mu. Well, unfortunate that you were broadside, my friend. And he stuck out in the open. So we're just going to fire sap rounds on cooldown. Maybe need to lead a little bit more than that. Enemy Iowa is keeping us spotted. Friendly decides to use radar, which is a great call. It should be easily a kill shot by us. We draw on the shot. We get the kill. Very easy at doing tons of damage quickly. And uh, the enemy Iowa, he's uh, he's pulled a really hard knotzer. And I'm just trying to position myself so I can take advantage of the smoke. Notice we haven't really used our smoke. This is the best smoke in the game for denying damage towards your ship, though. So at any point, I can decide to instantly activate it. Oh, and we accidentally shoved Sap in his back. Really sorry for that. Uh, be careful when you're firing around a teammate with sap. It does a lot of damage, and it's just damage that they can't really mitigate, obviously, because you're, you're hitting them. But we switch to HE, and we're firing on him. Now, notice something about this situation. We don't have enough gun range that we will be detected by the Alaska, so this is actually in our advantage, the shallowness of the guns. I have considered advanced firing or rate of fire. Rate of fire is a messy proposition because the guns have terrible reload as a nerf decision by Wargaming. Uh, so you really have to consider, is the range worth it? Would it add so much to my success? Uh, the shell arc is kind of borderline. Oh, nice, I took the eye wow. But I, I just don't think that the range is the right way to play. I think you need to invest in other things. Relocation, for instance, you need it. Concealment expert, you need it. It lets you get close enough for the ambush. And as I was mentioning, Notice that the Iowa was not the radio located target, which means, yes, of course, the Massachusetts. The Massachusetts decided to push forward, and you know what? We're going to make a pretty slick play here. We're going to hug the island very closely, so we are not spotted. Remember, I could use my smoke, but I don't need to unless I'm spotted. Uh, we instead use speed boost to get right up alongside this guy, and I'm sure he's shocked to see me here because he didn't see me at all. So we were able to get into a really strong position. We dropped two of our three. Uh, the way the launcher works on Paolo Emilio, it's set up similarly to the Udaloy. It has one for port, one for starboard, and then one universal. Uh, that way you can have two per side, theoretically. Obviously you only have three. So you have to decide what is the best play for that particular situation. And in fact, Against the Massachusetts, we didn't actually need the second torpedo launch. The first one was accurate enough, and the torpedoes did enough damage that that's all we needed. So it was just icing on the cake at that point. And that felt great, rushing in and taking that guy out. I'm, he was absolutely shocked to see us there. And that's one of the plays that are available to Paolo Emilio. So, as I was speaking about the French DD line, both really fast... Both have a really high alpha mechanic that both need to consider because they might be countered when they're trying to make use of it. Uh, obviously, for the French, main battery reload, if they have main battery reload, you want to hide and force that cooldown to be wasted. For Paolo Emilio, you don't want to be in a position where your sap round damage is wasted against a target that, you know, predicts what you're trying to do. Enemy Kid doesn't really predict that we're in this position and I'm sailing directly towards him. 
just as I would with a French DD, I am hunting actively DDs, and I'm taking advantage of situations where, just like this, no one else can return fire. Nice big 4 5k broadside. Yeah, you better move. Uh, but we're taking advantage of a soft window in the enemy's defense. No! Oh, the reload. Just barely too slow. And unfortunately, the enemy Alaska does spot us out. So instead of taking free damage, I have so many charges of my smoke, I decide to actively use it. And this is great. This feels so awesome to be able to use an ability and instantly benefit from it to keep that aggression up. I love it. I love it. Uh, and I, I really like this creeping smoke that the Italian DDs, the Italian cruisers, and the Italian battleships will all get to enjoy to play with. So I, I think Paolo Emilio works well with it too. Uh, you're never spotted. You need to be careful though. Using this smoke, you're very vulnerable to players spotting you with radar, shooting you in your own smoke, and denying you yourself any spotting information. Because smoke is sort of that double-edged sword, you got to be very careful when you use smoke. You might walk into a trap where using your smoke will end up denying you and your team line of sight and giving your enemy the perfect opportunity to damage you without risking their ship because they'll either be behind an island, uh, they'll be using your own smoke against you. Highly recommend you do this against Italians. It's one of their weaknesses. Uh, or, you know, worse. So we did a good job of going after the kid. And this felt really refined. Like, this felt like the right way to play. Uh, a little bit of French DD, uh, coupled with maybe a little bit more of an even more reckless DD uh, torpedo play. But that smoke, that smoke and that speed boost, they're sort of game changers with regard to how you interact with your, your ship, smoke, and torpedo. All of that, you know, coupled together, creates this really unique experience that... Honestly, I feel like I got my Research Bureau points worth. I can't say that with a straight face for other Research Bureau ships. Uh, just because either they're not strong in the meta, they don't, get, they don't offer a unique enough gameplay loop, or they're too expensive. You know, all of these factors definitely contribute to lukewarm Research Bureau ship purchases. But Palo Emilio is not one of those for me. In fact, this is a really fun experience that I can't wait to experience for a full line. And, you know, it, it works really well. It feels, it feels like this is the way that the Italians were always meant to be versus the first version where, you know, basically sap round an enemy DD two or three times and he's gone. Uh, this is much more of a back and forth. Yeah, your opponent can angle and uh, we tried to rush in to use our torpedoes. And we're doing the best we can. And man! Friendly Yamato wipes out the turpids before we can even get a torp hit on him. Uh, but it was an aggressive play. And the reason I made that aggressive play, look at my health. You know, I could have easily popped my smoke or waited probably 10 seconds and had smoke up. And then at the 7.1 kilometer detection, activated smoke rushed in to as close as possible to the target, try and torpedo him. If you are a target dealing with Paolo Emilio, don't show a perfect broadside. And if you suspect that Paolo Emilio is on your flank and he might be rushing towards your position, especially if you're a battleship or cruiser, turn the ship around and run away. The worst thing that you can do is commit to straight towards the target because there is no return. You know, Paolo Emilio might die, but you definitely will if you make zero attempt to move outside of range. Uh, but if you do make an attempt to move outside of range, there's a high probability that the Paolo Emilio will have his smoke drop off, and he will be stuck in no man's land, and you can get some chip damage or even kill him. So you got to be careful. You don't want to go too all in on the YOLO play. I know Paolo Emilio super meme worthy. Uh, and it definitely has big yellow moments, but the more refined play involves a little bit of sap here and there, using your smoke every so often, using your speed every so often, not relying on your AA to protect you because the AA is awful, probably the worst in the game, tier for tier. It's on the same level as the Shima. I mean, it's bad. 
is really bad. You can't defend yourself from air. Uh, you can't shoot it down at all. You're just you're just helpless. You have to sail towards a friendly or pop your smoke and hide. That's your only option. Uh, but for 43,000 Research Bureau points, this is a bargain. I love it. So much fun. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do daily World of Warship videos, somewhat daily. First impression, how-to news and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you, have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you next time.